This is a catalytic reforming unit in an oil refinery. It is used to convert low quality distillates into premium gasoline. The feed is naphtha, a light cut from the crude oil distillation unit. Let us find out why we need to convert it. Here is a diagram of the molecules found in naphtha. Naphtha is a mixture of the four types of hydrocarbon molecules. Each of these types has a different value as a motor fuel. Naphtha is composed mostly of normal paraffins. These have a poor engine performance unless they are quite small. Isoparaffins and naphthenes or cycloparaffins occur less abundantly, but they give a good engine performance, especially at high engine speeds. Very few aromatic molecules are found in most naphthas, but it is they which give the best engine performance, especially at low engine speeds. It is the compact molecules which make the best motor fuels, and naphtha, because it lacks this type of molecule, is of little value for this purpose, hence the need to convert it. Here are the proportions of the different types of hydrocarbon molecule desirable in a typical blending component of high octane gasoline. The aromatics about 50%, the isoparaffins and naphthenes about 40% and some small normal paraffins about 10%. These are blended together to make the motor fuel. It is the job of a catalytic reforming unit, as seen here, to change the molecules of the feed into the desired shapes. We can illustrate what happens to the molecules during these reactions by using diagrams. This pattern represents the molecules in a reformer feedstock. The molecules range between C6 and C10. They are mostly normal paraffins, but there are also some isoparaffins, naphthenes, and a few aromatics. The feed enters the charge pipe to the unit. First, the feed is mixed with a constantly circulating atmosphere of compressed hydrogen. It is mixed with the hydrogen in such proportions that there will be eight molecules of hydrogen to one hydrocarbon molecule of feed. The proportion is important and must be carefully controlled. The pressure of the atmosphere is maintained by a compressor which picks up hydrogen from the far end of the unit and compresses it before it is mixed with the feed. The reason for the hydrogen atmosphere will become apparent as we go along. The feedstock is atomized to fine droplets as it enters the hydrogen stream. It is then heated to vaporize the oil completely. This mixes the hydrocarbon molecules intimately with the hydrogen. The temperature may now be as high as 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, and the fully vaporized feed enters a reactor. Here it makes contact with the catalyst. A catalyst is a substance which changes the rate at which a chemical reaction occurs, but is itself unchanged at the end of the reaction. The catalyst most commonly used here is a form of platinum carried in small inert pellets. Here it is used to speed up the reaction. The vapors enter through scallops set in the side of the reactor. Pass across the catalyst bed and leave by a central pipe which leads to the bottom of the reactor. As the feed enters, remember that it consists largely of straight chain molecules which must be converted to new shapes by the reactions which proceed in the catalyst bed. As shown here, it is very hot and the pressure is high in the presence of the catalyst and there is also the hydrogen atmosphere to be taken into account. Notice the stages in a reaction as a molecule changes its shape. The reaction occurs on the surface of the catalyst and in two stages. Firstly, the straight chain molecule loses its two end atoms of hydrogen and becomes a cycloparaffin. Secondly, 
six more atoms of hydrogen are lost from the cycloparaffin, which becomes an aromatic molecule. It is by this reaction that the straight chain feed is largely converted to aromatics, and it is the most important of all the reforming reactions. The conditions in the reactor are carefully controlled to favor it. Any aromatics present in the feed will be unchanged. Let us find out how the conditions of heat and hydrogen help to promote it, as we see the reaction repeated. The hydrogen atmosphere under pressure is used to stop the molecule from cracking completely in the high temperature. On contact with the catalyst, the molecule absorbs heat and loses two atoms of hydrogen before changing its shape. Again, the molecule absorbs heat, which lowers the temperature in the reactor, and loses a further six atoms of hydrogen, thereby increasing the hydrogen in the atmosphere to become an aromatic, one of the most compact of the hydrocarbon molecules. This reaction increases the volume of hydrogen and reduces the temperature. Not all the reactions do this. Here is a reaction which has no effect on the volume of hydrogen and practically none on the temperature. As the molecule touches the catalyst, it becomes unstable and spontaneously rearranges itself, becoming an isoparaffin. Further changes similar to those we saw earlier can make the branched chain become a ring and the ring become an aromatic. It is the effects of temperature and pressure in the presence of a catalyst and an atmosphere of hydrogen which promote all these reactions. Another reaction is different again. It gives out heat and takes up hydrogen. The molecule gives out heat and breaks. Then hydrogen from the atmosphere fills the empty bonds and completes the molecules. Here is another reaction of the same type. Watch the stages. Firstly, heat is evolved as the chain breaks and this raises the temperature in the reactor. Secondly, hydrogen atoms join onto the empty bonds, keeping the molecules whole. As smaller molecules are formed, the size range is increased. Another and very desirable reaction of this type removes sulfur from the McCaptan molecules in the feed. The sulfur released forms hydrogen sulfide gas with hydrogen from the atmosphere. Let us summarize the reactions and remember the important points about them. These are the changes which take place in the shape of the molecules and the role of heat and hydrogen in the reactions. There are three main groups of reactions. The first reaction takes place in two stages. The straight chain molecules become more compact, changing to cycloparaffins. Then these cycloparaffins become aromatics. Meanwhile, heat is absorbed and hydrogen is released. The reaction in the second group is a rearrangement of normal paraffins into isoparaffins. There is no significant change in heat or hydrogen. There are two reactions in the third group. In the first of these, the size of the molecule is changed, but not the shape. Heat is given off and hydrogen absorbed. This reaction is the opposite of those in the first group. The final reaction removes sulfur from the captain molecules in the feed, giving out heat and using hydrogen from the atmosphere as it does so. The first two reactions predominate.
they use up heat and make hydrogen. So the temperature in the reactor falls and the hydrogen atmosphere is increased. Even though the hydrogen atmosphere is used to stop the molecules breaking up and depositing carbon on the catalyst, we cannot completely stop this from happening. After a time, the catalyst becomes choked and must be removed for regeneration. The temperature of the vapors leaving the reactor is lower than when they went in. Nevertheless, they are still very hot, so they are cooled in heat exchangers where they give up their heat to the cold incoming feed. Here we can compare the reaction products with the original state of the feedstock. The reactions have compressed the long straight chain molecules in the feed into branched chains and rings, but especially into aromatics. The size range has also been increased by the formation of lighter molecules. Let us take another look at the catalytic reforming unit. This end of the plant is where the reactions take place. The products of these reactions are then freed from gases and split into the aromatics and the iso and cycloparaffins in the three farthest towers. Subsequent blending of the products ensures that the refinery produces top quality motor gasoline.